first off, let me just say um, to each and every one of you, I mean, you have embarked on a remarkable, mysterious voyage. You will do things and you will see things in your career. You'll experience things, you'll meet people in your career that you can't even imagine. And I'm jealous, I'm envious. And I mention that up front because I don't ever want you to lose that sense of adventure and the sense of discovery and the sense of importance of, of what you do. Ask you, each and every one of you, a question. Why are you in the Navy? Why did you choose to join the Navy? I think impressment has been outlawed in Australia for year, years now, maybe, maybe decades, right? So each, each one of you made this choice. Now my guess is that for most of you, you saw something in naval service and in, in the Navy that resonated with you. Maybe it was, maybe it's the family profession. Maybe you love the sea. Uh, maybe you wanted to learn technical skills. Something in naval service resonated with you and you saw yourself in the service or wanted to see yourself in the service. I think it's, all, it's important for each one of us to be very self-conscious about why we serve. Realizing, of course, that those things can change over time. You know, maybe you chose naval service for one reason and maybe five, ten years down the line something will change. Your motives will change. Your view of things will change. I think that that's in the nature of things. But it doesn't make it any less important to, to ask yourself that question. My second point, really to echo Admiral Haney, and I'm, uh, he said it, but I'm going to say it again. Never stop learning. First, never stop learning about yourself. I think self-awareness is an extremely important trait. And I've encountered uh, plenty of people at all levels uh, who lack self-awareness. And I personally, it's something that I work on all the time. It's not something that you just sort of master and then you can kind of sit back for the rest of your life. Second, never stop learning about others. Look at others, those uh, you serve under, those who serve you, and you know, see it, try to figure out in them what their admirable qualities are, and try to emulate them. Because it's, it's great to have a wonderful, a wonderful boss. Um, but of course, the truth is we don't always have wonderful bosses, right? I won't let, you don't have to comment on that. I'll, I'll, I'll just say I haven't always had wonderful bosses. But learning from the other type of boss can be equally valuable. What is it that makes that hypothetical boss such a terror? Um, how can I avoid being that type of a leader? So learn from the good, learn from the bad. Also to echo Admiral Haney, read. Fred Smith is in the, uh, is in the audience here, former, former student of mine. He can attest to the fact that the, the course I teach at the Naval War College, um, everybody's sitting down. Uh, students read between six and 800 pages a week. Um, now the joke is it's only, you know, it's only that much reading if you do it. Uh, and, and, and students tend to roll their eyes and it's a lot, a lot of reading. But, but and again, I'm, gl I'm glad Admiral Haney said this before me. The most effective leaders that, that I've had the pleasure of dealing with are lifelong learners. They are individuals who read a lot. When I served in the Pentagon, um, one, one of the minor parts of my, uh, my, my job was uh, flagging things for the Secretary of Defense, who was at that time uh, Robert Gates, and uh, things that I didn't think he'd read. And, uh, and, and sending it up to him, things that I thought he should see, just in terms of uh, out in the press or academic journals or books. And I will say that I pretty much failed in that job. 
And I failed in that job because I'd say eight, nine times out of 10, he'd already seen it. Because he was a lifetime learner uh, and he was always reading and always looking and, and with, a, with a crushing schedule. He nonetheless found time to do that. Be inquisitive, Admiral Haney's mentioned, mentioned that. Going with that, I would say, don't take things at face value. Uh, and don't take people at face value. I mean, I, I can't, I can't uh, recount the number of times that, that I've, you know, I've, I've read about somebody, say in the newspaper, a characterization of, of somebody, uh, and then actually met them. And I remember one, one particular individual who'll go, who'll go unnamed, but just uh, had been really pilloried uh, in the press, and this person was just, you know, nothing but bad things. And then I actually met and got to know the person and found him to just be a wonderful, supremely moral, caring individual. So that inquisitiveness and that, that critical thinking is, is, is extremely important. Third point I'd like to make. Um, the Navy doesn't do anything. What do I mean by that? Well, partially I'm, I'm putting on my grammarian's hat. What is the Navy? The Navy is a noun. The Navy is, in one aspect, a large bureaucracy. It is an unfeeling organization. Uh, there's a saying, don't ever fall in love with the Navy, because if you do, it'll be an unrequited love, because the Navy is incapable of love. That's partially true. The Navy is, and I could say the, uh, an army is, or an air force is, or a, a foreign ministry is a bureaucracy. It's an organization. It is incapable of human emotion. But that's only partially true. More importantly, the Navy is a collection of individuals. So navies don't do anything. Commanding officer can do something. Sailor can do something. A ship's company acting together can do something. So what I would call upon all of you to do is to give the Navy a human face, to at least uh, within your grasp and within your reach, try to make sure that it's not an unthinking, unfeeling organization. That leads me to my, first, my fourth point, uh, which is the difference between networking and relationships. Now, there's a whole, uh, you know, uh, culture of networking, and there's networking events, and I think we even had some associated with uh, with with this with this uh, uh, with this with this conference or with the, with the industry show. Um, I personally can't stand networking, um, but what I what I can stand is building relationships, and. I would, you know, I would encourage you to devote time and effort to building relationships and building a network in that, in that sense. In that sense, a network is that group of people that you can rely on, that you know that when things need to get done, these are people that you can, that you can reach out to and they're gonna help you get things done. Key to that is is building your reputation. Now again, I think there's a, there's a school of thought that thinks about building reputation as a conscious act. You know, I'm, today I'm gonna go out and build my reputation. Um, the truth is you build your reputation every day whether you think about it or not. And because you do that, I would urge you to, to think about it. Uh, you know, others will judge you based upon their experience with you, fairly or unfairly and that your reputation is extremely precious. Uh, if you build it and, and, and you, you, know, you, you do the right thing, you will be the type of person that other people seek out. Again, in that, in that large bureaucracy, in that unfeeling organization, there are some lights that shine brighter than others, and those are the people that get sought out. 
So try to be, try to be that, that person. So build your relationships within the Navy. And one of the wonderful things about navies is you can also build relationships across navies. Uh, there is this, you know, this fellowship of, of the sea that allows us to build those relationships. Um, and those, those relationships within the Navy, across navies, I think really, really are key. Last, last brief point. Um, do the right thing. Now that sounds, that sounds easy. Oftentimes it's, it's very difficult. But have the courage to do the right thing. As I look back on, on, you know, on my career, uh, the, the times that I'm, I'm least proud of are the times when I didn't fight harder for the thing that I knew to be the right thing. Not when I did the wrong thing, but I didn't fight hard enough to do the right thing. Uh, I always used to tell uh, people who worked for me in, in the Pentagon, um, look, we don't live in Stalin's Russia. What's the worst thing that's going to happen to you? They're not going to take you to the basement of the Lubyanka and shoot you in the back of the head. So do the right thing and cultivate the ability, you know, as officers, you better know how to do the right thing. Thank you very much.